Adobe Fresco is such an amazing program that I wish I would have found sooner. It's got a couple benefits for me that make it outweigh Procreate, but even if you're still a Procreate user, this is a really cool feature that I think you may find useful and frankly worth it to at least give Adobe Fresco a try. And that feature is live brushes. So let's dive in. Okay, I have Adobe Fresco pulled up. I've got the app open. So over here on the left hand side, you're gonna see three different types of brushes. Now, before I get into this, um, I do wanna say, I've got a full length video that's about 55 minutes long that goes through all of the different tools in Adobe Fresco, and it works from the left to the right hand side. It briefly touches every single tool to give you an overview in less than an hour. So if you've got a spare Saturday, spare Sunday morning, and you wanna fix a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and really dive into all the tools, Definitely go check that video out. I'll link it in the descriptions below. But for now, let's stick with the live brushes. So over here to the left-hand side, when you open Fresco, once you have selected your document, you're gonna see three different types of brushes. The first being pixel brushes, which is selected right now. The second being live brushes, which is what we're gonna go into. And the third being vector brushes, which we're gonna cover in another video. So we're in the live brushes. In the live brushes, you have two different options. And the cool thing with Fresco is that you have you can work in vector and in pixel or raster simultaneously in the same piece of artwork. So one good thing to note for those that may be curious is that the live brushes are raster or pixel brushes. They're not vector. So just to kind of get that out of the way and let people know up front, um, that's what we're working with. So first we wanna go with the watercolor. And let's just go with the watercolor soft wash brush. That seems to work for now. So let's pick um, a color. And again, I'm not gonna go through all the tools. You can watch that in the other video, but let's just pick like a pretty pink or something. And briefly, this just goes through the size of the brush. You can pick your flow, and then you can also pick your water flow, okay? So let's kind of start to lay this brush down a little bit in this pink. So you'll notice that as I'm sort of, and let me zoom in a little, you'll notice that the brush is very similar to a watercolor brush. It's got, you know, very similar features. So if we wanted to come in here and layer on top of it, as I'm sort of stroking this down, you're gonna see some of this color bleed and it's just moving through the paper or the digital page as a typical watercolor would. And if I just kind of touch in here, look up here in this section, and mind you, it is a pixel brush, so it is gonna be pixelated. The edges stay super live and super wet, which is amazing. Now, if I wanted to, this little, thing that floats around here. If I wanted to double tap on that, okay, so this is called your touch modifier, and this floats around. You can move this all over the screen wherever you want it. If you double tap on this, typically, if you're in a pixel brush, when you double tap the talk, uh, when you double tap the touch modifier, you're able to erase in the same exact brush that you're selected. With the live color, or with the live brushes, it allows you to paint with pure water. So this is super cool. So you can come in here and just pull some of your watercolors. Let's say you're wanting to get some of the pigment out and just paint with pure water. You can do so. And over here in your water flow, you can adjust the water flow up or down just like you would with a traditional watercolor. This is absolutely fascinating. Um, okay. so. Let's say that we wanted to blend some of this yellow in here. We just come in here and it just blends in so beautifully. Okay, so you can see, and then if we wanted, you know, to increase the brush size, uh, we can just kind of keep holding down and it's gonna keep pulling the pigment. And then obviously we have the blending happening. So, I went over this in my other video, but I it's worth mentioning here. 
let's say we want to get funky with some oil paints and we want to blend in some oil paints into these watercolors. Typically, you can't do this in real life. You can't really blend, but here in Fresco, you have this feature where you can do that. And if you're noticing, like I can get this canvas texture, which is really unique. So if I go over here to these sliders, you can turn the canvas texture on to none, which is what that looks like. Or, oops. Or you can keep it on canvas texture. I, I frankly, I like it um, on the canvas texture. So let's erase that really quickly. I think it gives a really nice and neat texture. Uh, so here you have your brush flow, which is the paint. How chunky do you want the paint? Do you want it to be super, super chunky? Uh, do you want it to be a little bit thinner? And I kind of consider this like loading a brush, um, very similar to how you would traditionally work. If you're someone who likes to really heavily load your brush and have really dense and thick textures when you're working, that's this feature, this flow feature is something you would want to crank all the way up. Um, so that could kind of mimic your traditional working. Um, the paint mix is obviously just the, the blend of the paint mix. And so what I wanted to kind of show you guys is this ability. And if we kind of zoom in here a little bit, you can see that we're pushing paint here, but we're getting this blend. If you look sort of right in this area of the pinks and the blue. So if we go back to the watercolor and I think we're on the soft wash and we hold our finger over by the pink, which is um, the color that we want. And we come in here, look how we're able to just completely blend these pinks and these purples of the oil color. Now, of course, as we're blending, we did, we did select for the oil brush to have um, that, that texture. And so as we're pulling paint off of that and blending it into this pink, basically pulling the oil paint into the watercolor, more of this texture in here, this canvas texture, it's going to remain, but obviously it's going to be uh, adjusted by the color that we're mixing into it. So you sort of get this really incredible mixture of oils and watercolors, which you traditionally just cannot mix these two. So let's paint with pure water and just kind of see how this all blends. And we want to maybe, maybe let's turn the water flow down a little, but it's truly remarkable and I'm just swirling my brush kind of in a circle and painting with pure water to get this really unique blended watercolor kind of wash. And I'm not really trying to make anything here, um, but really just trying to highlight and showcase the capabilities of this particular tool in fresco which is super unique to fresco i've not seen anything out there um, at least that i've worked with personally that i can speak on that can replicate and do something like this so another cool feature of fresco is if we go in here and uh, we want to go back to our brushes there's not a ton of selections for the live brushes more so in the pixel and the vector brushes but in the event that we were mixing and working with a ton of different brushes in here um, and utilizing what we have, Fresco has this really neat feature where you can go to recent and see all of the brushes that we use so we can bounce back and forth pretty seamlessly. Let me go here to charcoal and let's do a charcoal media. And I'm just putting all of this on one layer, by the way, this is... That's just what I'm doing. Let's paint with pure water. We just laid down charcoal and now I'm painting with pure water to completely blend it into the mix. 
this is as close to working with traditional media that I've experienced that you can get with a digital program. It's pretty fascinating. Now, one thing that you can do, let's say that you're working on this painting and you get a call, you need to run, you got to jump to a meeting, you're done working on it for the day. What's amazing is with traditional media, typically speaking, it's hard to keep watercolors wet. Oil stays wet, obviously, a lot longer. And there are some tactics you can use to keep your work staying wet. But in the event that you needed to leave this alone and come back to it, you can leave this document in perpetuity, come back to it three years later and still work with the wet media. If you wanted to set the media, you come over here to your layer and down here at the very bottom, you have something that says dry layer. And that will basically set everything as you have it completely dried. And then you can come back over and layer on top and basically repeat this process all over again. All right, so I hope that shows you some of the live brush features in Adobe Fresco. I wanted to go through it really briefly and just showing something here, just blending some colors. But if you guys are interested in me doing like a full paint video where I'm painting like a full abstract painting and I'm utilizing the live brushes and whatnot, um, let me know in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to do like a paint with me or um, I also do like illustrations and doodles and things like that. So if that's something that's interesting, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. And if you're looking for more of a complete walkthrough of Adobe Fresco, definitely check out the video I mentioned earlier, um, which I'll also link in the description. All right. Happy creating. Thanks so much.